So this is a quick uh, demonstration on how I do um, atmospheric paintings uh, and using a limited palette of just four um, colours. Um, the four colours I'm going to use are yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And you find that Various mixes of these give you all sorts of lovely warm um, greys. Mixing French ultramarine with uh, burnt sienna or, or burnt umber, um, you get some a whole range of beautiful um, warm, warm greys, darks and lights and so forth, and shadow colours too. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit in that I have just discovered this um, colour. These are all ones on Newt Newton. This is quinacridone sienna. Uh, by uh, Daniel Smith and I may add a little bit of that a little later on it's uh, a lovely uh, transparent um, sienna slightly brighter in its um, in, in red than the burnt sienna um, and uh, it really does brighten a, a picture up so I may just use a little touch of that okay um, I'm going to be working in a moleskin A4 watercolour sketchbook with 200 gram paper um, and I've chosen a scene here which is of the Thames um, with Tower Bridge in the background and an old steam ship uh, in the foreground and just to show you the sort of um, pictures that you can do there's an example Again, with Tower Bridge at the back in the background, um, with an old tramp steamer uh, um, discharging cargo into uh, lighters and so forth, um, and then again on the Thames is um, one of my favourite uh, sailing craft, Thames sailing barge, uh, moving up the Thames, and you can see the sort of atmospheric. Um, uh, picture that you can that you can paint. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to paint the sky and some of the water. Um, and to start off with, I'm going to give myself some time, buy some time, and make sure that because I want a nice, soft, warm um, feel to the whole painting. I don't want any hard uh, edges. So I'm going to buy myself some time by. Um, covering, coating the entire paper with clear water. So, big brushwork. This, this painting, this, this picture paper is not um, pre-stretched, it will cockle, um, which can be a bit of a bother, but I'm wanting to work in the, the sketchbook, so that's uh, going to be okay. So I've wetted the entire um, picture. And now I'm just going to start off with the yellow ochre. I want to capture the light through Tower Bridge in the background there. So um, we'll start to put in the yellow ochre. and reflect that into the water and leaving the water right close to the bridge almost white I want to capture maximum light there um, and now I'm going to drop in a little bit of um, burnt sienna it in. I find that the only burnt sienna which is really worth having um, is the Windsor & Newton professional watercolour burnt sienna. I find a lot of the other manufacturers 
um, the siennas are not as bright or as well pigmented. There we go. And finally, we'll drop in some ultramarine blue in the sky right at the top. You can see where it hits the um, burnt sienna, it goes slightly grey, which is fine. Remember that when you're putting more colour onto a wet surface, then your colour, the second colour, or the second amount of colour needs to be slightly stickier, slightly drier, otherwise you'll end up with mushrooms. So, so there we go. There's use a smaller brush. I want to go a little bit deeper, so um, I'm just going to again. I'm just using the pure. Ultramarine, Just a little bit more up there. I'm not going for a dramatic sky, I'm not going for lots of clouds or anything at all. I'm just going for a nice soft feel to the whole painting. Now, down here on the water, close to the eye, I'm just putting in one or two streaks for slight waves. And I'll probably add to that a little later on. And as I mentioned, I'm just going to use a little touch of this Daniel Smith colour, which is a Sienna. Um, which is just that little bit brighter. There. I just want to put that into the sky, just to brighten the sky up a little bit. Reflect that down here. Okay, so I'm now just going to dry that off, um, and that's all I'm going to do with the, the water and the, um, the sky at the moment. Quite simple. There's no um, complicated clouds or anything at all. Um, the next thing to do is the the far distant uh, detail. Um, a lot of uh, architectural landmarks like the uh, Tower Bridge, Eiffel Tower, Statue of Liberty and so forth, they just need their outline silhouette for people to recognise what they are and therefore where you are in the world when you're doing your painting. Um, and um, So there's no need to put in a lot of detail at all. And it's also, as I say, these are in the far background so they, they just don't want a lot of um, um, intense detail at all. So I'm just going to make a mix of yellow ochre a little bit of burnt umber and a little touch of ultramarine blue just to grey it all down as in the distance see what that looks like so just starting off with the buildings over here being quite rough with these these are almost sort of random shapes. In any uh, painting, it's a good idea to connect all your shapes together. I'm doing this with the same 
colour, the same tone right across. I will change that. Oops, not quite right. There we go. I will alter that in a minute because this is still all wet. So there we go. And we've got a few more buildings over here. A little bit more water in this one, so they're a little bit lighter in tone. The temptation is to start putting lots of detail into these windows and that sort of thing. But all I'm going to do is use the same mix again. So yellow ochre, burnt umber, touch of ultramarine blue, make it slightly stickier, slightly darker, and just use that in one or two areas, maybe at the, where it hits the water, just to give slightly different just a little bit of so it's not detail work at all it's just adding a little bit of tone there and there same so it's the same color Now I'm going to do a little bit of work on the, um, uh, the vessels themselves. Um, what I should have said right at the beginning, of course, is that I've combined several photographs, um, old black and white photographs. Um, for, these are ships that go back to sort of the 1920s. Um, and so what colours I use or how I put the tones in is really up to me in many, many respects. Um, I'm going to just brighten this one up here a little bit. I will say that that superstructure underneath the uh, bridge there is oops, is white, that's perhaps just a little bit too blue. Let's just take some of that out. So when it's white, of course it will reflect the sky and therefore um, very often you'll have a little bit of blue in there. Um, okay, that's slightly darker as it comes down the side. We've got a lifeboat up here that's usually white, so I'll just put that in. Um, the top side colour there is a dark grey, so ultramarine blue, burnt umber. And I'll make that darker again, making it slightly stickier for the rest of the hole. Just make that slightly darker. Just want to get that slight difference in colour. Okay, so that's the start. Okay, now the other side of the hull, I want to make further away from the from the light. So I'm going to make that quite dark.
a little bit of blue into the windows of the of the bridge. There's no need to put too much detail in. Um, a funnel would be a nice grey colour. Make that slightly darker down one side. And we can do the same with the, um, the craft over this, this side. These are in the middle distance, so they have a little bit more tone to them than the, um, the buildings in the background. We've got this vessel here which is making its way towards the bridge. to be too much too too finicky about the detail there um, that's slightly browner I think it's not quite right that's better it's all rusty hull type appearance Bit of shadow under there. Okay, so we're getting very close now to the, the finishing of the painting in many respects. Um, the next thing we want to look at are the um, reflections in the water uh, from the various objects, the ships, and so forth. I'm going to make up a, a wash of burnt uh, umber and ultramarine blue for that. We'll start off with the, the main subject here, just reflecting and shapes. Sometimes it's a good idea to um, Draw the reflection in pencil just to give yourself a guide. A spindly funnel. Got a mask coming out here. Just going to intensify that slightly. Slightly sticky mix. Be careful when you use these two colours, the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue. Um, 
in that you can get a very, if you make them too intense, you can get a bit of a dirty black grey. Okay, so I'll come back to that again in a minute. We want the same on these vessels too. So I'm just going to make this one here just slightly darker, but uh, a bit more blue to it. Now, just a couple of things to, to finish off on. This reflection is okay, it's fine, but it's a bit of a, um, a heavy lump. So I'm going to... Um, uh, break that up. Most reflections are slightly darker in tone or deeper in tone than the actual object itself but I'm going to break that up um, with a bit of white gouache perhaps and also put in some um, smoke from the funnels so I'll do the funnels first, the smoke so I'm just going to drop in some clear water of that funnel and we'll do the same here too and then just use a bit of the burnt umber and um, octarine blue just to drop in so we get this sort of fluffy smoke. Don't want to make it too intense. Same over here. And it gets lighter and thinner and wider in fact as it goes further away from the funnel so there that's fine so i'm just going to use some white gouache with a fine brush and some horizontal strokes just to break up this just underneath those white strokes put a little bit of ultramarine blue extending it out little wavelets extending those out slightly
So there we are, there's the, um, the painting finished. One or two things I've just a little bit more work on, added a bit more. Um, as the smoke from the funnel has dried, it got a little bit light, so I intensified that a little bit. <clears throat> Broken up this um, reflection with some uh, white gouache. Um, put a little bit of reflection on the wharf areas into the water uh, on either side. Um, a little bit more inking uh, pen detail um, in the, uh, the ship itself. But there we've got it. We've got um, a lot of captured light. Um, we've got a calm scene, quite an atmospheric scene, just using really those four colours. So it's yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you have great success with your own paintings.